hi everybody and um, welcome to my seventh and eighth, sixth and seventh week pregnancy vlog. So I'm enjoying doing them in two week intervals. I don't feel there's much demand to get them done, but I have a lot to talk about in this one, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, like I had said before, I have a little notebook and I write, you know, the week and everything down. It just helps me to remember. I don't remember everything from Jackson's pregnancy, so here we go. At six weeks, I was having a lot of nausea at night time, like through the middle of the night. Um, Jackson is still up at night time, so I would find when I would get up to deal with him or simply just rolling over in bed, I would have some pretty good waves of nausea. So that was not very much fun. I still had a lot of breast tenderness. Um, it even now is still the same. So I would say, well, I shouldn't say the same because sometimes in the evening it is terrible bad. But so breast tenderness still there. I was emotional, which I didn't find my, you know, my emotions went up and down in the beginning of Jackson's pregnancy, but I was definitely more emotional in week six. I had no motivation. <laughs> it took everything I had to do my normal tidying up when he'd go down for a nap, you know, load and unload the dishwasher, wipe down the counters, that kind of stuff. That took everything I had, so there was no extra energy for vacuuming and washing floors and cleaning bathrooms and those kind of things. So that really sucked, and I'm just I'm pushing through that. Those things have to get done. There's four people that live in this house, and they have to get done. Luckily, I do have a teenager who has some chores, so that's a big help. Um, I went to the doctors, just my family doctor, at six weeks and five days. And we just went over all the paperwork. It wasn't actually with my doctor, it was with her nurse. So we did paperwork, history, that kind of stuff. Um, my blood pressure at that appointment was 93 over 65, which is pretty normal for me. I'm always low. And I was informed that in my prenatal blood work that I had had done in week five, my glucose test came back high. No big surprise there. Um, for those of you who followed me with Jackson's pregnancy, I was a gestational diabetic. And yeah, so I have to go for a two hour glucose test where you drink the, the stuff and wait for two hours and then have your blood drawn again. And I really need to do that. I was gonna do it today, but that's a long time, two hours with Jackson. And they make you stay there, so I don't know. I had my beta done. The, when I did my prenatal blood work, I was five weeks on the dot, and my beta at five weeks was 7,000 and something. So also, at that appointment, we discussed the NT scan, the 12-week scan, and um, I got my blood work requisition, requisition for the blood work that I'll have to have done. And we have my NT scan done and just a booklet explaining, you know. It's an understanding of what they're screening for. So that was six weeks. It was busy. Um, it was nice. And I really like the nurse at my doctor. Um, it's a new doctor to me. I didn't have a family doctor when I was pregnant with Jackson. So this is really a nice experience and she will see me monthly up until I go to my OB, which will be the same one I used for Jackson. So seven weeks, that was last Wednesday, I turned seven weeks and I had my first ultrasound and that was with my fertility clinic. So that was great. I was super excited and Dave and Jackson and I went down. I was just really, really excited and, you know, of course, really nervous because you just don't know what's going on in there. So the three of us went down and I really love my clinic and I was expecting it to be, oh, 
My dog's coughing on something. Sorry. I was just, I know what my ultrasounds were with Jackson. They were so special and they made them so special. And I had a sucky ultrasound tech. Uh, if you've watched my seven week ultrasound update, like when she shows me everything, she's like, here's your yolk sac and here's, you see that thing with the little flickering? That's the fetal pole. And here I'll let you listen to the heartbeat. And okay, that's it. So I was really disappointed. She didn't give me any pictures. And so I was really disappointed. But I got to see baby. I saw heartbeat. Heartbeat was 129. And Jackson's first ultrasound at eight weeks and two days, his heartbeat was 152. So my feeling is that this is a girl. I felt that before my ultrasound. And I will be doing a telegender. I am actually going to do a review for them, so that is awesome. Keep watching for that. <sighs> After our ultrasound last Wednesday, we told our family and friends, and I will insert a picture of the announcement that I made up to tell them. And it went great. Um, everybody was excited except for Dave's parents. <laughs> so his mother was not very pleasant about it and that's really upsetting. Um, I think the reason why is we don't drive brand new vehicles, we don't own our home, we rent. And Dave and I didn't meet until our early 30s. So we kind of got a late state, late start to the game and we had to make a decision for ourselves as a couple whether or not we wanted to work at purchasing a home and doing all that's involved with that, you know, updating our vehicles, which our vehicles are fine, there's no reason to update them other than Dave's is like a 1996, but it works fine, so why get rid of it? Um, did I say 86? It's a 96. 86. Yeah, it would need to be updated. Um, so we made a choice as a couple to grow our family and put buying a house on hold for only a year or two more. We live in a wonderful side-by-side -side house. We have a backyard, a garage, a front yard, our own driveway. It's a beautiful home, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and we're happy here. So. You know, unfortunately, we pay rent, so our money isn't going towards anything any every month. But it was a decision we made. And his mom's response to the Christmas card was, Well, I'm certainly not going to congratulate you, but I might kick you in the ass. Fine, whatever. So it took me a couple of days to get over that. I was really upset. And, uh... So whatever. And then yesterday... Well, we had we went to his grandparents and told them, and they were excited, and his aunt and uncle were excited, and things like that. So, um, and I made it public on my personal Facebook last Friday night, and got great reception from friends and family on there. And I said to Dave, I'm like, we haven't heard from his sister. And sure enough, we ran into his sister yesterday, and she didn't say congratulations. She didn't even mention it, so... I don't know if she didn't get her Christmas cards yet or what, but yeah, so they bummed me out. Not very nice. <sighs> so when I met with the doctor after my ultrasound, I got way off on a tangent there. Um, she gave me a prescription for diclectin just on a whim because I had said, you know, I had a little bit of nausea through the night and well, Wednesday night after my ultrasound, I was up throwing up all night. It was horrible. So Thursday I went and I got the Dayclectin and I have been taking one tablet before bed and that pretty much holds me off from throwing up. I do have bouts of nausea but all in all it's been pretty well. My only major complaint I can say about week seven was I had severe, sorry, TMI, 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 constipation issues. So I have upped my fiber to try and combat that and hopefully that will be getting better. So, 
it will be, you know, eight weeks now. So there's my sixth and seventh week update. And congratulations to everybody that is getting their BFPs. Oh my word, it is like an explosion. People who have been TTCing for years getting their positives. So that is absolutely wonderful. I know that there's still a few that were with us in the beginning. And I just... I just hope and I pray that it's going to happen for you guys soon. So I give you all my baby dust because this is it for us for babies. Um, I said that with Jackson, but this is it for us. For sure, Dave and the cat might be getting a two-for-one deal after the baby's born. That's how, uh, that's how my dad explained it to me when I was younger. I, I knew why the dog couldn't have puppies and... I asked my dad if I could have a, a brother or a sister, and he said no, because him and the dog had got a two-for-one deal, so he couldn't have babies like the cat, or the dog couldn't have puppies, so, minutes, but I will see you guys for week eight, and I have a baby buy video coming up, and also some videos of what I bought the kids for Christmas. Talk to you guys later. Bye!